This weird shape is the solution of a cursed quadratic equation, where A is a triangle, B is a circle, and C is a spinning star. And we can use different shapes to get different solutions. This one is satisfying. This one is stressful. And this one is boring. There are way too many options to put them all in the video, so I made a website where you can switch things up yourself. But before you do that, let me explain what's going on. What does it mean to put shapes in this equation instead of just regular numbers? Each shape is a collection of points, and each point is a complex number. The complex numbers are two-dimensional, so we can use them to make shapes. In my previous video, I explored applying a function to a shape. We take each point of the shape as an input to the function and graph the output. The results are pretty cool. And doing this made me wonder, what if we combine different shapes, like a triangle times a circle? This presents a problem. Two different shapes have two different sets of points. Given this point on the triangle, which point of the circle do we multiply with? I decided to match points using their angles. So this point on the triangle combines with this point on the circle, since they are the same angle from the x-axis. So now that we can match the points, we can multiply shapes, or add them, or subtract them. There's a lot we could do. I think the quadratic formula is a wonderful way to showcase this. It has addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even a square root. But it's kind of a pain to write, so we'll instead write the equation that it solves. All right, let's do it. Let's say A is a square, B is a circle, and C is a triangle. And the result is... That's actually kind of disappointing. Um, what if A is a hexagon? Or if C is a pentagon? Hmm, what if B is a triangle? This is not very fun. Why do they all look the same? To understand why, let's make all three shapes a triangle. The result is just two points. What about all a square? All a hexagon? It's always just those two points. Since all the shapes are the same, we could divide out that shape so that A, B, and C are all one. Input those into the quadratic formula, and we get negative half plus or minus root 3 over 2i. And that's these two points. Returning viewers may recognize these as the Eisenstein integers omega and omega squared. Three copies of any shape will just give these points. But what if they're different shapes? Well, since we're using points on the same angle, the points will be close together, so the solutions are close to omega and omega squared. I'd like something more interesting. So let's split up those input points. We'll make the circle negative. The circle's point will have the negative angle of the other points. Okay, this is a little better. Let's switch around the shapes. And what if we make the triangle negative too? Okay, what about a star? Well, at any given angle, there are two points. Which one do we pick? To draw the star, we have to make two laps around the origin. So we can say that this point is 4 fifths pi radians, since it's on the first lap, and this is 14 fifths pi radians, since it's on the second lap. Now, each point has a unique angle, so we know which to pick. To match one-to-one -one with the circle, we just take half of the angle. So the first lap matches with the first half of the circle, and the second with the second. Now we can get all three input points away from each other using a star, a negative circle, and a pentagon. Hey, this one actually looks nice. And so does this. Let's rotate that star. Cool. This one's interesting. And what if we add the points of the triangle? Wait, there's six? The triangle only has three points. Where do the other three come from? It's because of the square root. Each number has two roots, so each set of points gives two solutions. 
the solution shape is actually a combination of a positive shape and a negative shape. But it's not always clear which is which. If we vary the radius of the circle, we see the shapes split. And this is why I animate just single points instead of trying to connect them. When I first started writing the code yes, for this... Yes, okay, very interesting. More importantly, changing the radius looks cool. Let's do that again. And add the points. Very nice. Now, this pentagon is regular, which is fine, but what if it were a flower? Or if we made it wiggle? Or smooth? Let's add wiggle to the 11 gong. These new shape types are really fun, but I don't always know what to use, so I added a random button to switch things around. Sometimes the result is amazing, but sometimes it's not. So I also added a hearts button to cycle through some of my favorites, though I won't spoil them all in this video. You'll have to check them out yourself. And if you find an equation that you really like, you can copy the settings and then paste them here later to get right back where you were. And you should also paste them in the comments. I want to see the cool patterns you find, and I'll add my favorite ones to this hearts section. That's all I have to say, so thanks for watching, and go play around with the site.